is Hatsi and I'm back with a brand new build video and this time we are going to be building a French inspired chateau and it is for Valentine's Day so it's actually Valentine's Day when I'm recording this and I have to say I haven't had many good Valentine's Days <laughs> in the past. I would love to know what you've been up to today and I mean I know it's probably late when I'm actually uploading it because my internet's really slow. If I could I'd get it out the same time as I have made the video but because it's so slow it takes me like a day or two to actually upload a video. Now it does because I'm compressing the files, not to get too technical, but it takes me less time because the files are compressed to when I used to upload, which is pretty good. And yeah, anyway, so today I'm actually going out for a meal with my husband. This is really weird. So he booked somewhere and well, it turned out they didn't have any reservations to begin with. Then somebody canceled. Somebody actually canceled the day before Valentine's Day. I wanna know who that person is and give them a hug because that is the worst time to cancel a meal. Seriously, that is terrible. I mean, I don't know. I hope it's not like a broken relationship or anything. I hope that our table's not gonna be tainted tonight, but hey, who knows? It probably will because it's me and some really unfortunate things happen to me. But yeah, let me know what you're up to because it's really interesting to find out and also, it doesn't matter if you're not doing anything. You don't have to have a date tonight. It's actually really embarrassing because the worst date that I've ever been on in my life was actually on Valentine's Day. And it's so embarrassing though, but I've never talked about it before, but I'm gonna talk about it in this video because why not? And also, if for any reason you feel a little bit under the weather today, then I think this story may cheer you up because I'll tell you what, every single time I have a rough moment, I think, do you know what? It could be worse. I could be on that date again. <laughs> That's what I think to myself because it was so bad. And I actually told it to people at Gamescom. So I told it to like, um, I told it to Deligracy, the Sim Supply. I don't know if they were listening. <laughs> they probably weren't listening, but I did tell them. And I also told Julie V. She was there as well. And she was telling me about her bad date story. It's a funny one, it is, but it's slightly crazy. And also, if you have some bad dates of your own, then let me know, because it's actually really funny to talk about this sort of stuff. I find it funny, you might not find it funny, but I personally do, because I like to laugh at myself after I've done something really silly. Okay, so what happened was I was very recently out of a relationship, and I was about 16, no, in fact, no, 16, 17, that was a time when I had like loads of dates. I had too many dates to count, that's the problem. At that age, I was going crazy for dates. So anyway, what happened was I started texting this guy and it was a really bad idea because I hadn't met him beforehand and he was a mutual friend of somebody that I knew and we had a lot of mutual friends in common. So he came up on Facebook strangely and what happened was we had so many friends in common that like every five minutes, I swear, Facebook would just pop up with his picture. Do you know this person? Do you want to have him as a friend? Do you want to add him, etc., etc.? Because Facebook, if you have Facebook, you will know that Facebook do not leave you alone, ever. In fact, I'm still getting notifications on my phone about people's birthdays that I have no idea, like who even are they? They were just like one random friend that I had one time in my life and I get a notification every single year, a few days in advance as well about when their birthday is. How lovely is that? And apparently I can't turn it off or something. I have no idea. But yeah, anyway, long story short, Facebook pretty much just set this whole thing up for me. I'm gonna blame it on Facebook. I don't really like Facebook that much. I'm not saying it's because of this reason. I'm just saying that I felt quite pressured by Facebook to add this person. And it got to the point where it was actually quite awkward because we had too many friends in common. So he actually added me and I want to give him a fake name. I want to call him Michael. So Michael was he was an okay looking person. Maybe there was just something that just wasn't compatible about us. So Michael sent me a message just saying, hi, I thought I'd add you because we have so many friends in common. It just makes sense. And I was just like, yeah, I felt exactly the same to be fair. Um, <laughs> darn Facebook. And that's what happened. So that's how the conversation started. He was actually really chatty just on Facebook though. You know, we were just talking. I wouldn't recommend this to anybody by the way. I really wouldn't. I'm sorry if you've met somebody in your life like by this way, but it just really didn't work out for me. So just be careful. Anyway, we exchanged numbers and we eventually started texting because apparently it was more convenient for Michael to text me rather than it would for him to Facebook me. That was probably just him trying to be smooth, trying to get my number. 
and we started texting so Facebook was just off we just abandoned it we just dumped it and after it set us up and then we were texting so Michael was texting me and like he would just text me like every single second of the day and it was getting really repetitive and just like he wouldn't have much to say though you know it would just be like a hi how are you what are you up to not much you not much like there wouldn't really be much to our conversations whatsoever after about three or four days of just like texting Michael and I was trying to text him back as much as possible but to be fair it's actually very difficult when someone's just like constantly texting you I was honestly starting to doubt whether Michael did anything else but text me I was thinking to myself how can this person multitask like how can he eat food but also text me this quickly it made no sense to me so I actually decided to say well why don't we go out because we're just texting and I don't really like texting relationships it's a bit weird I thought it'd be better if we just met up, saw what we thought of each other, and if we liked each other, then we would carry it on. And he said, well, yeah, I would, but it's like Valentine's Day tomorrow, and that's the only time when I'm free. And I said, well, I'm free as well. Like, why don't we just go out? So this was my bad idea. So I'm admitting this. So I'm like genuinely telling you the honest truth. I think that it was my idea at this point. And, you know, it's not even that bad. I don't feel bad. I feel that it's, it's a very funny memory to look back on. It was Michael's bright idea to go to the cinema and I hate the cinema. I hate the cinema for dates. I think it's great if you're going with your friends and stuff, if you know them. If you know them well, then yeah. But I think the cinema is probably the worst place to take somebody, in my opinion, for a date. Because the thing is, you can't talk to them, like, at all. So you're just watching the film awkwardly. And also, I don't know what it is, but as soon as I walk into the cinema, as soon as those lights go off, I need something. I get like a sudden urge to just get up off my seat and I have to do something like whether it's I'm hungry or I'm thirsty or you know just, just stuff like that. It winds me up so much because then I can never find my seat on the way back and I always end up tripping over people and just random stuff happens. Anyway, Michael asked me if I wanted to go and watch the new Justin Bieber movie, which I really didn't want to go and watch. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't want to offend anybody that likes or dislikes Justin Bieber. I'm actually very on the fence about everything because I don't like him, but I don't dislike him. I think that some of his music's really good and I enjoy it, but I think that as a person, I think that he's gone through a lot of stuff, which I can't judge because I haven't been there myself. So it's quite difficult for me to have an opinion of somebody that I don't really know. And also I feel like the media may twist some things that he has done in the past, but I know that he also has messed up a lot. So. It's difficult, you know, a lot of Disney stars go off the rails and things. He's not a Disney star, but a lot of like young kids do. That's the sort of example that I'm trying to give you here. And I don't want to judge him. So anyway, I went to go and watch the film. But before then, Michael picked me up in his car. So he had this like blacked out car and it had like blacked out windows and it was like bouncing. <laughs> And it was also playing very loud music to begin with. He was playing the Drake albums. He was a massive fan of Drake. I got into the car and he just said hi he was very shy though like as soon as he saw me he just he almost went into his shell and I felt really bad for him because I was like okay you're probably quite shy but I didn't say that to him of course we had like a little bit of small talk in the car it really wasn't much though to be honest like a lot of the journey was just him driving very quickly like round corners as if he was trying to like dodge the police or something seriously that's how I felt and also just crazy just loud music and it was deafening but yeah anyway we got to the cinema and he just like swerved up in this car like put the brakes on i don't know whether he was trying to impress me or something but it definitely didn't it made me feel really ill because of the amount of times that he swerved and just went over the speed limits i always like to watch people with the speed limits and make sure they're not going over he was definitely going over it's not cool, it's not cool. Anyway, we got out of the cinema and he was walking separately to me as well and he didn't really say much to me at all from what I can remember. Like, he really just said hi and that was it. There wasn't really much that we could talk about. We didn't go to the same school. We didn't have a lot to say. We didn't know what each other liked to do, etc. for hobbies. The only thing we had in common was our friends. And then after talking about our friends ran out and got a bit old, there wasn't much left to talk about. We got into the cinema and he hinted that he wants to pay but he didn't pay now i do not mind that whatsoever in fact i always insist that i go half 
with anybody anyway. Like it doesn't matter to me. I've always just gone like half and half on a date. He just walked into the cinema by himself. Like I was just walking behind him. It was really odd. It was almost as if he didn't really want to watch the film with me whatsoever. He would just like walk off. That is so embarrassing though. I didn't really know what to do in that situation. You know, I very nearly left by myself. I was very nearly like, do you know what? I'm just gonna go because this is pretty rude. Anyway, we sat down in the cinema and we found some seats. After that, after the film started, we didn't say one word to each other because I couldn't think about what to say to him. I was put off because he was rude because he like walked off without me. He just ignored me. You know, he didn't even want like my opinion on anything that was going through the film. He just sat there. And like he would laugh at all the really cringy, unfunny parts of the film, <laughs> which were really weird. And I wouldn't find funny. I'd just be like, that's not funny or what's so funny about that. Now, I'm not slating this film whatsoever. It was actually quite, I'm not gonna say educational because that is a definite push. That is, no, that's too much of a push. However, I would say that the strangest thing about the film for me was the fact that, you know when you have like a happy moment in a film, well, they tried to make it almost into a sad moment and it didn't really go together. Like the fact that Bieber got picked up by Usher, that was supposed to be, looked at as a sad moment but it wasn't that was actually quite a happy thing i mean like it must be terrible getting picked up by usher um, so i didn't really understand it but he nearly had tears in his eyes like i looked over and i'm pretty sure he was tearing up and i was thinking oh my goodness seriously who have i decided to go on a date with today and i don't mind people getting emotional and crying i actually find it really nice when people can show their emotions but i just felt like it was way too much and especially because it wasn't even a sad moment, it was actually quite happy. So I was really confused. Anyway, we ended up leaving the cinema and he did the same again. He just like walked off without me. I was thinking to myself, is he just gonna drive off without me though? I was really worried. I was thinking, how am I gonna get back home? Because the cinema was ages away from my house. So it was like 45 minutes and all the buses were closed, but there was a good reason why I couldn't get back home. And he had to drive, you know, that was the only way that I would get back. Unless I got a taxi, but that would have been really expensive. And also I didn't have the money to cover it. Anyway, after that though, <laughs> so he nearly, I think he nearly drove off without me. I think that was the thing, you know, he really tried to like get into his car as quickly as possible. And it was almost like he didn't want me to go back or whatever but it was really weird and actually it was really ungentlemanlike. i think that's the best way to describe what happened there you know i would never treat anybody like that and it doesn't matter if you go on a date with somebody and you don't like them you never abandon them they are still a person they are still a human being and to abandon somebody or to try and abandon someone well, that is just horrible <laughs> it was very late as well this film showing was very late at night and it was just awkward Anyway, I get back into the car after not really wanting to and there's no conversation there again, like nothing. The most we've said to each other is like, hi, and then we had maybe a sentence said about one of our friends or something and that was it for the whole day. I have to say it didn't get much better after that. It was really awkward. There was an awkward silence and we didn't know what to say to each other. And also his body language was absolutely terrible so he tried to drown me out with music again and like this drake album was like blasting again it was so loud in my ears <laughs> i didn't know what to do but i was just thinking all the way through this is the worst day i've ever been on because i've never had anybody that's tried to drown me out with music before that is a new low i have to say and he really didn't want to speak to me he was like turning away from me on his driving seat that was how bad this was now, I was just looking out the window and all of us in this Drake album just stopped. You know, bear in mind, we were speeding back home. He was trying to get home quick. He was driving quicker the way back than he was on the way there. He really wanted to get back and fast. He just wanted to drop me off and I could tell we were never gonna speak again after this because we had nothing to say to each other. So after that though, the album stopped and all of a sudden, no, it gets even worse because I started to get used to Drake. I was thinking, do you know what? Maybe rap music isn't my favorite genre, but right now it's actually becoming increasingly better. And when it changed, it didn't just change to any singer. No, it changed to one of the most depressing albums I have ever heard in my life, which was Adele, Someone Like You. And it was her album for it, it was her record. 
Now, I absolutely love that song. I love Adele. I think she's fantastic. I really enjoy her music. But I have to say, on the way back from a first date, when it hasn't gone so well, blasting out in my ear as we're driving home isn't what I wanted. It's just, it's not what I pictured for the first date. Anyway, after the song finished, it was playing over and over and over again. And I turned my head to see that Michael was now turned away from me just like as much as he could and also crying michael was crying on our date <laughs> no i actually couldn't know what was happening so i felt really bad about this because i was thinking is it something that i've done though i don't know but i really didn't say anything so i couldn't have possibly offended him but i was actually quite upset about this i felt like crying myself i was like this has gone so badly i think i've just i've, I've hit rock bottom what can i say and after that, I was so glad to get home though. Oh my goodness, I just ran upstairs and I just thought to myself, that is the worst day I've ever been on. I never want to see that person again. And he did text me after that, but it was really brief, like, hi, it was okay, wasn't it? And that was it. Like, that's all he really texted me or something. I honestly can't remember. I have to try and find the text or something. I don't even know if I'll be able to find that text now because it was a few phones ago. However, it was very bad. It was a very poor day. Anyway, it took me a few days to pluck up the courage to just forget this whole situation about Michael crying to Adele. And also the really awkward cinema where we said nothing to each other. Now that's really unusual for me because I'm actually quite chatty, but to find somebody that just won't work with anything that I have to say to them, it's very unusual, but it's very awkward. I actually asked my friend that knew Michael very well because one of my very good friends was very good friends with him or something like that. I don't even know how it worked. However, I asked her about him and I just said, look, we had a really bad day and I just want to get your take on it. You know, is, is there anything weird going off with him? Did I do anything? Because he was crying on the way back and I was feeling really worried about that. <laughs> I was thinking maybe I'm just the worst person today ever. But she said, that he just had a really bad breakup with somebody and she thinks that that's why he was crying on the way back. Anyway, so I went onto Michael's Facebook page. I scrolled down like a couple of weeks ago. Bear in mind, this was years ago. So it's not a couple of weeks ago now, this is years ago now. However, I scrolled down to find that there were loads of just posts on his wall about this girl. And he was saying, how could you break my heart? How could you do this to me, etc., etc." But it really reassured me because I was thinking, well, at least it wasn't me though. At least there was a genuine reason because I would be very upset if that turned out to be me. I found a Facebook page and I went on it just out of curiosity, you know, to see what all the fuss was about, see what the crime was about. And I have to say, this girl was the exact opposite of me. Like he couldn't have gone for a more opposite person to me possible. There isn't one out there. I obviously don't want to be nasty about anyone. And I'm really not trying to be. It's just to give you a genuine feel of what was going on here. Like this girl was really aggressive on Facebook. Like all her posts were just like swearing and just being nasty and et cetera, et cetera. And that is just not me. She must have had like a thousand eyelashes on each eye. And I'm not trying to be horrible here, but it just made me think, if I wasn't his type, why would he have wasted his time? I have no idea. But yeah, that was the worst date that I've ever been on. And I would, again, love to hear yours because it's very entertaining to share these stories with each other. And I have to say, I've had some really bad things happen in the past. There's one particular story that I really wanna share. And I actually just wanna talk about this for a second because I do wanna do like story times on the channel. But I'm trying to get to the point where I'm really confident with being in front of a camera and it's taking me a while. It's taking me actually a lot longer than I thought it would because like every time I put out a webcam or like a face cam video, I often get more negativity on that video than any of my other ones. I'm trying to deal with it slowly in my own time <laughs> and I'm not, bear in mind, I'm not looking for pity. I'm genuinely not because it's YouTube. I get it all the time. I get negativity, but negativity about my purse appearance is something that I'm not used to because I haven't done face cams before. And I think it's really difficult. I think that something that is quite tricky is being without face cams for a very long time, building up an audience without a face cam and then suddenly appearing on face cam because you're bound to get equal negativity or more negativity, just stuff because people aren't used to it. Yeah, 
that's what's happening. But no, I have so many stories to share and I'm just trying to build up my confidence. You know, again, I'm just trying to make sure that I do it maybe in little bits, maybe not do like a full story time at once, but just do it in like little bits and maybe put out a game or something with the webcam on. All the stories that I've said that I'm going to share, like the taxi crashing in Prague and my paranormal experience when I was very young, but it was insane. Yeah, I'm still going to do it, but I'm just building up the confidence at the moment. Just bear with me because what I do is I go away for a bit and I don't publish face cams and then I come back and I publish loads and then I go away again. And that's what's going to happen. I feel like I have no idea though. But yeah, I have a crazy boyfriend story that I really want to tell. I was actually repeating the story in a hair salon the other day and it went from me telling one person to me telling five or six people who were all there asking me questions about what happened next because they were so curious and they were just like no that did not happen that is insane you have to tell that story. It's going to be a good one but it's also going to be quite difficult to tell it for me because it's quite an emotional one. There are so many people that clickbait stories and it really winds me up because it sort of discredits when people actually have stuff happen to them. For instance, I was watching this story the other day and it was about the fact that somebody almost got kidnapped, but then it turned out that they didn't. And what actually happened was the fact that one of their neighbors had like a bit of masking tape and left it on the road. And that was apparently them nearly getting kidnapped. It was really weird. But that's the sort of reason why I feel like if I put a genuine title, like I was nearly taken, people might not believe it, but I don't even care. I'm gonna do it. I'm just, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna tell you my story, but I'm not gonna tell it now because it's crazy and it's too long. And it's also quite emotional. Okay, anyway though, going on to the build. So <laughs> trying to go away from that subject slightly. It has absolutely loads of landscaping on it. I was really enjoying landscaping it though. I put in a lot of effort to just go around putting love hearts, etc., and try and make it look romantic and Valentine's Day inspired. Something that really does puzzle me is why on earth do we draw hearts in a way that they don't actually look? That's really puzzling. When I was younger, I actually used to think that hearts looks like that, but I'm pretty sure that everybody thinks that when they're younger. And it was really shocking to find out that that is not what a heart actually looks like. Why do we draw hearts like that when they actually don't look anything like that? I don't know how usable this part is of the build. It's just supposed to look pretty. And if you do use it, I would love to know. I would absolutely love to know if you use this build because the thing is, I build all these things and I always wonder, do people actually use them though? Because no one ever tells me. <laughs> no, I do get some comments sometimes, like occasionally, of people saying, yeah, I'm gonna use it, but I never hear about what happened in that story. I love to know like what Sims have lived here, you know, that sort of thing. Like it's got history to it. I love that. I've actually been playing the game a lot by myself the past three weeks, I think. I've spent a lot of time just on my own, just trying to get better at actually playing the game and trying to get better at storytelling as well through it. A lot of people ask me actually, this is a completely different topic, but a lot of people do ask about what I come up with like when I'm speaking about things on videos. I don't usually write things down, well I definitely do not script my videos whatsoever because that would be crazy and also my videos are all over the place. It wouldn't make any sense for me to do that. It would just, it would sound really weird as well. It would sound like I already knew what was going to happen before it happened. But before I did start the audio, I already knew that I wanted to mention something about a date because it's Valentine's Day. You know, it makes sense to talk about something like that. But yeah, it takes a lot of practice. You know what? I was actually really nervous when I first started YouTube. <laughs> Incredibly nervous. It used to take me about a day to do an audio or like even more than that, just because I'd be so nervous and I'd just edit everything I did. And it just didn't help, you know? Sometimes it's just better to relax and just try and think about the fact that you're talking to a friend rather than an audience of like thousands of people because that can be off-putting. Oh my goodness. I can't imagine like how people with millions of viewers do it each time flawlessly. That would really stress me out, I think. But yeah, anyway, I wanted to talk about why I've been off recently. And this is a perfect video to do it in because it's such a long one and I'm probably gonna talk about it all the way through the interior. So I'm sorry in advance, but to be fair, if you've been wondering, then it's brilliant for that. Okay, to begin with, I was gonna do a story about the hotel that I stayed at in 
Switzerland. So, so to give you a brief idea about that, I stayed in a really bad hotel, I think. I think I might have mentioned it though. Oh my goodness, I hope not because it's actually a really good story. I hope that I haven't said anything. But if I have, I'm sorry if I'm repeating some of it, but I'm only gonna tell it briefly. Well, what happened was I had a really bad stay at the ski resort hotel and I'd stayed there before. It's called Chalet Royale and it's actually a really good hotel, but we just had a really bad experience. To sum it up, it was awful. The staff were rude. The lady at the reception desk promised that after the first night, she would switch my room because we had the most annoying rave going on upstairs. Rave, yeah, so like clubbing and stuff. There was a whole crowd of youths upstairs. <laughs> wow, I can't believe I just said youths. However, they were so noisy and they were up till 3 a.m. on the first night. And the lady on the reception desk promised me that she would move me because of the racket. She said that it was completely out of order that they were making that much noise and she would talk to them and they were gonna give me an upgrade. However, I think it was the manager that then got involved and she was like, no, we're not gonna give her an upgrade. And even worse, she said all this to me really, really fast in French so that I couldn't understand it. And I can understand some French, but I can only understand it quite slowly. But yeah, so after the woman spoke to the manager about it, after the woman spoke to me in a different language right in front of me, apparently I wasn't allowed an upgrade anymore and I had to stay in my own room. And all they would do is just try and speak to them and try and make sure that they wouldn't make that much noise again on the second night I was staying there. And that's really all I could hope for. You know, I was just like hoping and praying that they wouldn't be so noisy because 3 a.m., sleep for me is not good. I was really struggling the next day to get up and just function. It was not going well. It was not a relaxing break for me. I mean, seeing as the Chalet Royale do actually advertise like peace and tranquility or whatever on the website, I'm not trying to bash them or whatever because I've stayed there before and it's a really good hotel, but this time I went, it was bad. And I don't know what's going on with them, but it was very, very poor. However, the next night, the people upstairs were up to about 4.30 and it was even worse. Like the noise was unbearable. I couldn't sleep and I actually rang the reception desk at about 2.30 to complain. And I didn't realize this, but the desk downstairs actually closes at a certain time and it just rings them normally after that. Anyway, the manager picked up and she answered the phone and she said, yes, like that in a really angry voice at me as if I was like a nuisance or something. And I was taken back. This was really early in the morning and I was very tired. And anyway, she pretty much said to me that she can't do anything, they're loud again, blah, blah, blah. She just like tried to apologize, but it wasn't really an apology. It was more like a, I'm sorry that you're staying at the hotel, but it's not our fault. And that was it. Like, that's all she really said about it. You know, she wasn't gonna do anything. And I just said, well, actually you're not sorry because if you were sorry, you wouldn't have made us stay here again, like in this room that's really bad for noise. And you had the chance the night before to move us and you just didn't. And I don't know why you didn't because if the hotel's not full, I was told that it wasn't full. So she was just doing out of awkwardness. But yeah, that happened. <laughs> I didn't have a very good stay there. Loads of stuff happened and I'll probably go into it more at another time because we had some really weird experiences there. Like some of the staff were very rude and stuff, but I honestly can't remember if I mentioned it. I hope I haven't because it's a very good story. However, what happened was after I got back, I was very ill. I don't know if it was the lack of sleep or whatever it was, but also the food at the hotel wasn't very good. We had some issues with that. So I think I got food poisoning somewhere and I got back and I was very ill and I didn't want to record. I feel sometimes if I record when I'm ill, it's not very nice to tell people that I'm ill during a video. I don't like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just me. I feel like, okay, I'm one of these people that has a fear of like touching things in public. You know, like a public toilet door. I wouldn't want to touch that. I'd try and use my jacket or I'd try, and, <laughs> I'd try and kick it open with my leg to try and avoid touching it. When people tell me they're ill on videos, it almost taints that video for me. And I'm thinking, oh, they're ill. But yeah, I can't enjoy it the same as I was going to enjoy it if they weren't ill sort of thing. So that's my view on that. It's really weird, but I'm a very weird person. And anyway, 
I didn't want to record because of that and I got back on Tuesday night and Wednesday and Thursday I was too ill to do anything. I, I just felt bad, like I just, I wasn't feeling recording and what I decided to do instead is I decided to work on interiors and just try and focus on that whilst I was feeling unwell. I decided that Friday would be the day that I would do loads of voiceovers. I would have to do about three or four on Friday to make up for everything though, to make sure that I stay in the routine of my videos, etc. And that's how things would work out. Things were going to be slightly delayed, but they weren't going to be that delayed, like a week or more than a week. You know, it was going to be controllable. Anyway, I had a really unfortunate Friday. <laughs> Because what happened was going back, okay, I've got to go back to the very start of when this happened. It started around Christmas time. I was getting very stressed with everything and things were becoming too much for me. I sometimes get really stressed when I do the house, etc. I was struggling to keep up with YouTube. I was struggling to keep up with my home life, etc. Trying to keep on top of the house because I'm also a housewife on top of being a YouTuber. And that's difficult because... I'm still unpacking the house because we have newly moved in here. I'm still trying to pick out furniture, trying to decorate. I was struggling to do that weekly, really intense clean that the house needed because I just couldn't find the time for it because I was so sidetracked with other stuff. And it might not feel like I'm putting that much out there, but what I'm actually doing in reality is a lot more than it appears that I'm doing. You know, sometimes I work on videos for like two days at once or three days at once. And the last part of Caliwell Estate took me three days. And it's just getting more and more like everything, everything's getting on top of me at the moment. Anyway, it was before Christmas. I was getting very stressed because I had to do the house and I also had to record. And all of a sudden it was perfect timing, but I got a leaflet through the door. It just like swept through the door as if it was a Hogwarts invite or something. No, it wasn't like that at all. However... <laughs> I looked at the leaflet and it turned out that it was a lady who was advertising that she would help around the house. She would help out with general cleaning and hoovering and things like that. And that is where things started to get so much easier for me and just so much more manageable because I ended up having this woman come to the house and she was absolutely fantastic and she helped me out so much. She only came three times, but in those three times that she came before Christmas, the house was spotless. Like I was obviously keeping up with it through the week and it was very easy for me to do that because it was manageable, but I just wasn't doing that intense clean that it needed like once a week because she would come in two hours a week and she would just blitz it and it looked fantastic. Anyway, time passed and I want to call this woman Jo because I want to give her a name. It's only right to. So Jo coming every single week, two hours a week and she would do everything within the two hours. I would leave her to it because I trusted Jo you know, she was a really nice woman. I got on with her as well. I thought she, that she was nice and she didn't really talk that much to me, but she was lovely like when we did speak. And also I would always give her extra money, like always, because I felt just so happy with the job that she did. It was fantastic. You know, the fact that she was helping me out. I also bought Jo a bottle of champagne for Christmas, but she never actually came to receive it because Jo, right before Christmas, when I needed her the most because I was having a Christmas dinner party, disappeared. Jo disappeared out of nowhere. She just, she vanished. That was it. And she was supposed to turn up on the Wednesday, I think a week before Christmas, I think it was. She was supposed to turn up and she didn't turn up. And I just gave her a message and I said, hi, is everything okay? You still coming around today? And she just texted me back hours later saying, ill, sorry. And that was it. That was the last time I heard from her. I tried to text her after that and just said, hey, are you up for coming? You know, maybe like a couple of days after, do you feel a little bit better? Or like, you know, hope you feel better, etc. Talk soon. I was really nice. And yeah, anyway, never got the bottle of champagne because she never came to collect it. And that was the last time that I ever heard from her. Now I've ruled out every single possibility that I did something wrong. Because the thing is though, I always do this. I always think, is it me? But the thing is, Jo would always comment on how much she enjoyed coming to the house and she said that it was the easiest job that she had because there was practically nothing to do when she got here you know it was already clean it was just like the hoovering and just the other bits but she said you know apart from that like your house is just spotless before I even get here and also I wouldn't mind if she went early or anything like that it didn't really bother me you know she could do the whole house within like 30 minutes I would still pay her for two hours I didn't mind 
So I was trying to think through the possibilities why Joe would have stopped coming to my house. And then it hit me. There was a money pot in the kitchen with 150 pounds in and I left it there and I hadn't been in there and my husband hadn't been in there. Now bear in mind, we don't have relatives or friends who live nearby. So it was very unlikely for anybody to be in that money pot, you know? And also we didn't have any guests come around within those three weeks that Joe was here. And that money pot was clear, it was empty. And that's when it hit me, I was like, oh, that's why Joe stopped coming. It's because she raided the money pot. That's the only thing that I can think of because I definitely didn't take that money out. My husband didn't, the dogs didn't, there's no way. I talked about it with my mum and she thinks exactly the same. She was like, yeah, that is the only reason I can think of. It was really sad though, because I feel like this person, I trusted them and they let me down. And it's just, it's so sad that that happened though. And it's awful if that's like ever happened to you. But yeah, that's what happened. Anyway, after that, I decided that because things didn't work out with Joe, I'm very upset about it though. <laughs> Genuinely, feel slightly emotional. However, I just, I was very stressed over Christmas and you may have realized that my videos were actually very delayed and it was because I was overwhelmed with everything and it may not seem like a big thing that I was getting overwhelmed by, but it's actually really big if you have to do everything by yourself with no help from anybody, no family around you, no friends around you, no one. And yeah, anyway, I decided that I didn't really trust an individual to come to my house anymore. So I thought, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through a company I'm gonna go like for a proper cleaning agency and I'm gonna do things that way then. And I did, I contacted this cleaning agency. They came around to my house. Bear in mind, this is still relative to the story. This is, <laughs> this is the reason why I was delayed with videos. And anyway, I went through them, etc. I had to pay them in advance for like random insurance stuff. They haven't even found anybody to do the house yet, but I've still had to pay them for the weeks that they're still finding someone. And they promised me that if they didn't find somebody within two weeks, they would refund my money and that would be it. Like they would, you know, they would go, that's it. So that's like what they guarantee. They say that if you, if they don't find someone in two weeks, you get your money back. It took them one week and six days to message me. It was right at the end. So this lady, we're going to call her Lauren. Anyway, Lauren came for an interview on Thursday. So now skip forward to the Thursday that I was off because I was ill and I was just like recording builds and stuff. Well, that's when the interview was and she was supposed to come around on the Friday. But what would happen is we'd do like a little mini interview and I'd just meet her for like 20 minutes and we'd just chat. And she was really nice, you know? I got a good impression about her. I thought that she was a nice person. I had nothing to fault about her whatsoever. And that's all I can say, you know? She was just like a, a nice person. And she was really curious to know about what I did and stuff like what I did for a living and I was just like really vague with her I just said well I just make videos online and she was really trying to dig you know she wanted to know what videos and where and all this stuff and I was just like well yeah I just I just put videos online etc and this is only really strange after that Lauren came around on Friday and bear in mind I went over with her what I was looking for so it was really basic it's really just hoovering and like polishing the surfaces and just going around each room and just making sure that it looks to a nice standard. And I just started showing around the house and I just said, if you need anything, just let me know. I'm gonna be upstairs with the dogs because I like to keep the dogs upstairs. They can get pretty noisy. And also, no matter who's in the kitchen, they're gonna try and pest them for food. <laughs> and it's really annoying because my dogs have the biggest stomachs ever. I have no idea how. They are literally the size of a boot. That is how small these little things are and they are so hungry all the time and it doesn't make any sense to me. I was upstairs just working on my stuff and Lauren was downstairs in the kitchen. After an hour and a half, there was no movement. Like I didn't hear anything from downstairs. I went downstairs to go and get a yogurt and the kitchen looked exactly the same as when she came in. And not only that though, she was on a phone, like she was actually on a phone just standing there. She must have been on a phone for about an hour and a half. Now, bear in mind, everybody has issues. I understand that things come up and people might want to check the phone and stuff, and I don't mind. I wouldn't have even minded if everything was spotless and she was on a phone. I would have no worry about that whatsoever. I'd just be like, do you know what? Fine, I don't care. You can listen to music, you can have a TV on. I do not mind. So cut a long story short, Lauren ends up staying extra time at the house. She ends up staying for two and a half hours instead of two hours. And she was just in the kitchen, just on her phone, just standing there. 
and I don't really know what to do because I don't like confronting people, especially not in my house. I have no idea, but I'm, I'm a pushover when it comes to that sort of stuff. But yeah, what ended up happening was Lauren left after like two and a half hours and she cleaned four glasses in the kitchen. She polished the kitchen surface and she'd swept the floor. And that's all she did in two and a half hours. Two and a half hours, I can't believe it. But yeah, I ended up ringing the agency and they were shocked. They were like, oh my goodness, we can't believe that's happened. She's new, I'm sure there'll be a reason behind it. And I was just like, yeah, I'm sure there will be. But I felt quite sad about that because what happened was after that, I had to have the time off YouTube, like the time that I would have spent working. I know that a lot of people will probably roll their eyes and be like, <laughs> YouTube's not work. But yeah, believe me, it is. There's a lot of stuff that I have to do apart from The Sims. A very small fraction of it is actually The Sims. And I think about 80% other than that is like editing, voiceovering it, like all that fun stuff. But I enjoy it and that's the main thing. So to cut a very long story short, that is the reason why I didn't have any videos for the weekend because I had guests around and also I don't like to record when my husband's here because he likes to do his stuff and that's why I have to record on weekdays and Friday was the last day that I could do voiceover before the weekend and then that was it, like that was my chances. So I spent Friday just doing the house and that was all I did because I had to do it because I had guests coming around. But it's just unfortunate. I know that there'll be some people that won't understand why I was so frustrated or like why I got a cleaning company to come in the first place. But I think that take away the aspect of the cleaning company, if there was something on your mind, if there's something that's really bothering you, no matter what it is, you know, if you've got like a whole pile of paperwork to do and you know that you could get somebody in to do that paperwork for you, and they would do it and they're experienced, they could do it in like half the time that you can because you're behind on it or something and it's easy and then they don't, like they don't do it and then it leaves you in a worse situation because the person that you've paid to come and do that hasn't done it and not only that though, it's to the point where because I haven't done it, it then makes it really difficult for you to then catch up with that paperwork because you're really behind. Yeah, that is like the best situation that I can compare it to. I know it's a really weird situation, but that's what stresses me out. I get very stressed about housework because I like everything to be incredibly neat and tidy and clean and it stresses me out when it isn't. Anyway though, on to the build. So I was decorating the lounge and also the kitchen at this point. These were very pale rooms. If I was gonna change anything about this build, I might change these. It was actually very difficult to make it French looking. It was, I was looking at so many pictures and the problem is we get some French country items but it just isn't enough to make it flow all the way through the build and make it look nice all the way through. I really did try with it. I think it looks okay in the kitchen. It might look a bit strange but the thing is I actually got inspiration off this kitchen, the shape that it was as well off my parents' kitchen in Switzerland. So I know it's not the same, but it's actually on the French border and they have a really weird kitchen. So get this, they have two of everything in their kitchen. So they have like two sinks on separate sides of the rooms. They have two places for the dishwasher to go. They have like two cupboards, two drawers for your cutlery, two this, two that, it's, it's insane. But it's like on opposite sides of the room. It's like a symmetrical room split down the middle. I think it was because the kitchen was designed by a Jewish family. I'm not sure though. I think my mum might have said something about the person that owns it. I think that her boyfriend might be. So that might be why the kitchen's like that. I think so. I think in the very traditional Jewish families, that's what you have. Typically, my sister's fiance was explaining it to me because he's from a very traditional Jewish family. So I'm not really sure. But it's really interesting because it's a completely different take on a kitchen that I'm used to. So apart from that, I wanted to talk about the series that are happening on the channel. And I've actually had like quite a bit of negativity. So I thought I'd address this right at the end because the chances are if you've watched it to the end, then you might watch my other videos and stuff. And if you do, then the series like Cali Well Estate and Let's Play Witches, I really want to work on them. Let's Play Witches in particular is actually very difficult for me to work on right now because like hardly anyone is cooperating with me about lines and stuff. So I'm messaging people asking for like more lines and I don't hear back whatsoever. So 
yeah, that's happening at the moment. I mean, fingers crossed, I'll have it sorted at some point, but it's just hard because I think the thing is as well, like with the series, because I've got so many people involved, a lot of people look to me as if it's like my fault why the part isn't out. And I get that because it's like, it's my, my series, you know, it's my thing, I write it, I do everything and it's on my channel. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, it is my fault in a way, but when I'm doing everything possible to do a series and it's not actually me, like it's the fact that I'm waiting on lines, that's when it gets really upsetting. So I'm just like, I really wanna get it out. I really want to start it. I mean, I spent days rewriting the end of Let's Play Witches and I don't know, it will be out, but it's gonna be out when people cooperate with me. So I'll keep you updated, but that's what's happening at the moment. Anyway though, going on to one of my favorite bedrooms. I love this room. I would always imagine that Henry VIII's room would have looked like this. I have no idea why. I think it's because I always love to watch these historical documentaries. <laughs> this is really strange to talk about, but there we go. I thought that would be a fantastic room. And that carpet is amazing. I love it. But the problem is though, I have to sort of limit myself using it and I had to use it almost as a rug because if I fill the whole room up to look like that, it's just gonna look too odd and it's not going to fit in. So that's what I had to do there. I don't really know if anyone's created a room that looks lovely with that carpet alone because I feel like, I feel like as if it's too much, you know, that gold is just too bright. It needs to be toned down a bit, but I don't know, maybe. But yeah, this room is supposed to be quite cozy. I think that I'd love to have a room like this, but it does remind me of a very strange place that I stayed once. So I stayed at a haunted hotel when I was younger. Nothing actually happened. I mean, we did hear like the coat hangers were shaking and then we smelt roses when we went into the hallway, but that was it. And apparently that was one of the signs. But then again, it was probably just some hotel person just spraying the scent of roses around to make it look as if there was some ghost activity. <laughs> But the room that we stayed in looked very similar to that from what I can remember. And it was creepy just because of the atmosphere and the wooden walls and all that. But we never actually went back. I feel as if maybe the hotel was too desperate for ghost activity. <laughs> maybe they scared the ghosts off. I have no idea. But I have some really funny updates on my parents' house and the situation with that. Because you might have known this, but I've talked about my parents' house in the past videos. And I talked about how they had some type of activity in the house. They apparently had a ghost that was stealing their cutlery. And it was really weird. <laughs> okay? But if you've never heard this story, I talked about it in the haunted mansion build that I did for Halloween. So it's in there. I just pretty much went through all the stories. But the strange thing was when I went to their house the last time... This was before we went on the ski trip because they live in Switzerland. So the first stop was actually going to their house and then we all went together to the ski resort. Well, we stayed, I think, one or two nights with them before going to the resort. And I was in the kitchen. I looked out the window and I saw a reflection of that woman in black again. So that was really creepy because that's twice now that she's been there. And the weirdest thing is, I swear, she was on her way to that kitchen drawer. She was going to go and take those spoons again. But on a serious note, it is actually quite creepy. But I have to say, I'm so used to weird things happening. I just carried on just like getting my drink or whatever I was going to do in the kitchen. And that was it. It didn't even bother me. But going back to the build, because that's really weird. I don't want to talk about the sort of stuff. I want to save it to like haunted build. But... What I was doing is I was finishing off that very pale room. I think that it's probably one of my favorite bedrooms that I've done so far. And I put the picture up on Twitter that I got inspired by it. So if you're curious to what room inspired me, then it's on there. So you can see the mood boards that I do. I think I mentioned it very early in the video, but to be honest, it's 55 minutes in at this point <laughs> or even more than that because before edits and stuff. So I don't know when I mentioned it, but yeah, there's a mood board on Twitter. You can find me at HatCYT and I'm there. But I'm trying to post more. It's difficult because sometimes I feel like I overpost. And I feel very conscious of that because I don't want people to think, oh my goodness, have you seen what Hatsy's just posted? How ridiculous. I post some really weird things on Twitter. So I just want to keep it to a minimum at the moment. 
the last room on the house was this little bedroom here it was for the toddlers and i think it's a cute room to finish off with but anyway that is the end of the build so i hope you enjoyed it and i hope to see all future videos thank you so much for watching and i'll speak to you all soon